Simon Dool joins us out of Australia. He's arrived. A man of pleasure. A man of cricket pleasure. So 14 hours from Dubai on the plane, Dool. You got a little bit of jet laggy, waggy, waggy, jaggy, waggy, laggy. <laughs> It's, I always find it easier coming this way, Marty, for some stupid reason. I don't know what it is about flying back from maybe New Zealand, Australia to sort of London, uh, the Middle East. That seems to be harder than flying down this way. So um, a good good sleep and a good uh, a good night, and we're all, we're ready to go. Okay, so how long did it take to get you from the West Indies back to here? Because Simon lives in Dubai these days, people. So how long, how long does it get to from the from the Windies back to Dubai? Uh, so we left Guyana at 8 a.m. Um, and spent six and a half hours in Barbados, then flew from Barbados to London, which is about uh, seven and a half, and then London down to um, Dubai, which is uh, another seven and a half to eight. So, yeah, it was, it was a longish day and a half, but, um, but we managed to get home and have about eight days rest. So okay. Fine. All right. All right, well, we've got this tournament called the T20 World Cup kicking off this weekend. Before we do that, though, we're going to talk to Craig coming uh, in about half an hour about the Bangla Wash final. Simon, it's us against Pakistan, and we've been talking over the last couple of weeks. You really rate this Pakistan side at, T- at T20, don't you? Yeah, they're a very good side, buddy. The one thing they've probably done is the New Zealand side. I think it's, it's an issue around that real power. I saw Glenn Phillips in the other day, or highlights of it, in fact, and um, man, it really impressed me. It's the one thing that New Zealand have possibly been missing a little bit is that real power through the middle. I, I do believe that you're going to require proper technically class batters in Australia, and so Conway, Williamson, the like will will do very well because I think that that's going to be a key part of, of winning this T20 World Cup in Australia. Pakistan certainly have that at the top with Rizwan and Baba, but they probably don't have that real power through the middle as well. And that was the one area I worried about New Zealand. Um, you know, for the same sort of reasons, but their bowling attack is outstanding. They've got a proper quick bowling attack. They, um, you know, got to spin if they decide to play two spinners, and I think they'll be very, very competitive. But both sides look relatively evenly matched, I guess. Anything Hang on a second, so just, um, just, um, where, are, where are you at the moment? What are you doing? Because you're, you're kind of phasing in and out, and it sounds like you're actually making a coffee in the background. What are you doing? Oh, it was actually, there was a bus flying past. Sorry, mate. Oh, okay. All right, there you go. Okay, that, that's... We're, we're, we're better off now. Okay, that's a lot clearer. Okay, so just go back to, you really like their bowlers, don't you, Pakistan? Yeah, I do. Yeah, look, they've got a quality uh, quick bowling attack. There's four guys they can play, I think, in any sort of given situation that all bowl in and around that 140 to 150 mark. Um, I think Harris Ralph is probably one of the best in the business. Um, Shaheen, when fit, is, is unbelievably good. And then they've got other guys like Dahani and, um, you know, the, the likes to sort of come in behind them. So they've got that quality there. They've got quality spin in, in Shadab as well. So it's, it's a very good side. It's a well-balanced side, as I say. I think the only issue was probably around where I was worried about New Zealand. It's just that real power in the middle order. Do they have it? Will they have it to, to win a game? So we've had Finn Allen in for Guppy and Gary Stead has said this is his first choice now and what he's done in the last couple of games I don't know how much of it you saw mate but he's gone out there and he's been belligerent with the bat and I feel that that's the one thing we've really been lacking from that Chapel Hadley series a New Zealander who goes out there with his chest puffed and his dong out and the bat in the hand saying come on I'm going to give you some that's what he's that's uh, to me the approach that we've needed and he's delivered yeah, absolutely. It's, sort of, it's hard, isn't it? Once you get longer in your career, you think you probably ease up a little bit more. But I think Martin Gupta has probably tightened up a bit more as he's got later in his career because he's seeing his opportunities a little bit few and far between, perhaps a little bit less. And I think that's been one of the issues for, for Guppy. Um, you know, and, and look, it's, it's, it's hard to say because he's had such a terrific white ball career from a New Zealand point of view. But um, I, I like Phil, like his approach. I like the way he goes out there and, as you said, sort of uh, just takes the bowling on. It's something New Zealand need, particularly if they're going to play Conway and Williamson. Okay, so the rest of the order, Daryl Mitchell, does he come back in? Because again, to me, he adds, he just adds an aggression and a, and a, and a poise and a pose and a, and, a, and a fighting spirit. He just, he kind of just brings a bit of grit to me. Well, there's options, isn't there? I think that's the key for New Zealand. They, they need to have those options in and around uh, the all-round category. And I think with Bracewell and what he's done, he's certainly um, a, a genuine option as well now. So it's, it's nice to have that balance of who, who do we pick rather than, um, you know, who do we, who do we sort of tend to leave out. 
What's Kane's role? Simon Dool is with us. We're talking about the T20 Cricket World Cup, and it starts this weekend, but our first match is against Australia next weekend. What's Kane's role? Is you know, Do you look at him as a rotate-the-strike guy? Because he can't do what he does in the Test match where he comes in and kind of relieves and holds it all together and that. We need a bit more urgency from him. So how do you see what he is going to do, where he's going to come in at three, and what's he going to do? Uh, pivotal role is, is the skipper first and foremost, I think, and just sort of patrolling the troops. But he, his role is to basically play a very similar type innings to Devin Conway, I think. So if, if perhaps Finn Allen gets out early or if Conway gets out early, then Kane's role is to either be a little bit more aggressive if Finn gets out and play, play the, the sort of anchoring type role if Devin Conway gets out. We, did, we haven't seen the best of Kane in the last no. like, probably eight, nine months. And that innings, just got to go back to that innings he played against Australia in that uh, final in Dubai last year. And it was, it was exceptional. It was full of absolute class. And he will be okay. It's just finding sort of that rhythm again. I think the, the surfaces here in Australia will, uh, will certainly suit him. Is he injured? He keeps getting rested. He was, uh, you know, rested in the West Indies when there was a suspected injury. And that I, it, I get, I don't know. Are they telling us the complete truth about this? Is the yeah. wear and tear on his body really taking its toll? I, look, I, my guess would be yes. Um, I, I worry about it, and I worry about the fact that they hide these things um, consistently. And we just we don't very often get the truth, but I also understand that they don't want to give the opposition any inside information as well. So in those situations, you kind of I know the media we want to know, mm. we, we want to know the truth, and all we all we'd like to do that you know them to do is answer the questions honestly. But uh, I do I do get the fact that they are trying to hide things away now and then, and and I don't know that he's um, he's been right for quite some time and. You know what will happen after this um, T20 World Cup? Who knows? With with Kane Williamson, does he go down the, the sort of similar route to what Trent Bolt's gone down? Dooley is with us, Simon. When's your first game that you're calling, mate? Uh, gosh, that's a very good. I've got the two warm-up games. India uh, India play two warm-up games in Brisbane on the 17th and 19th. So um, heading up there, I've got the uh, the big Everest race day at um, Royal yes. Randwick this weekend, yep. Marty. Yep. So um, heading along there, and then up to Brisbane for uh, Monday and Wednesday for the two warm-up games um, for India, and then my first one will be the New Zealand Aussie game. I think. Is Shag's horse going to win, or did he part zone? It's um it's um Randwick. Yeah. I, I, look, it's an interesting one. I mean, drawing the outside gate, um, Nature Strip, I, I, he, he's a very, very good animal, as we all know. I think he's he's probably um, going to take a very special one to beat him. It's drying, which is a good thing. Sydney have had some awful weather for the last probably two to three months, to be honest. It's been horrendous, We're consistently racing around on soft and heavy tracks. So drawing the outside gate on a slightly better surface, um, I think is probably a little bit against it, but um, he's the quality animal of the field. Whatever beats him will have to be very, very good. All right, a couple more quick questions on the T20 before we let you go, mate. And thank you so much. I know you, you got your jet lag and so forth. T- Tim Southey plays his 100th T20 International for New Zealand this, uh, this this afternoon, and only Roscoe and Guppy have have made that milestone. We are talking about it before. It's something that's, that is, that you, you know, we are going to celebrate a lot more of this, but the chances of somebody now, if you started playing for the Black Caps, playing 101-day internationals, I think, my God, you'd have to be playing for 30 years just about, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you would. Look, um, I, I'm so impressed with what Tim's done Same. in the last two to three, yeah. four years, actually. His, um, his career... I thought it, it probably looked like it was just waning a little bit if we go back maybe two and a half years. And I'm thinking just prob- probably prior to the Australian tour that we, um, you know, we stuffed up on selections a couple of times. What was that, two and a half years ago? Yes. Um, I, I thought his career was maybe not coming to an end, but just waning a little bit. And the way he has sort of not reinvented himself, but come back. And I mean, he was brilliant on that tour. He's been so good in the white ball format in the last probably two and a half years. And he's a really impressive character. He's changed a few things. He's developed different deliveries. He's developed, um, you know, a, a different way to bowl in test matches and, and in ODIs and T20s. And I've just been really impressed with how he's turned things around from what looked like being left out at different times to the to the Matt Henrys and Lockie Fergusons and, and uh, missing out on selections here and there to being back to being, you know, outside of Bolt, the, the sort of second yeah. selected guy yeah. uh, time and time again. And, and it's... It's a real credit to how Tim has, um, you know, prolonged that career and made sure that he gets the best out of himself. So really happy for him to play as 100. Dooley, he debuted at 19, mate. Remember that in Napier? Mm. 
Yeah, I do. What, seven sixes scored 60 odd against. Yes. Uh, yeah, England, England, I think. It was. 77, was it, against England at Napier? Um, yeah, it was phenomenal. And a uh, fresh faced kid out of Northland. And um, he, uh, yeah, look, he, he's had a terrific, terrific career. I mean, there's, there's many, many things we can sort of remember going back to that, uh, that World Cup at uh, Wellington. You know, at, at the turn yeah, where he destroyed got, England yeah. in that, yeah, that right. one-day game. Mm. Um, so many Test match performances I can think of. But you add to that that there's ability to, you know, very few fast bowlers in the modern era. I say fast with all due respect, medium fast, I suppose, um, are able to field in the slips and, and, and gully and be as good as he's been as well. Um, you know, that, that's one real credit to Tim. He's got terrific hands, and and you know, after bowling a, a tough over, he'll pop into the slips and take a blinder. So. Um, he's had a, a, a tremendous career and, um, you know, hopefully there's a little bit more left in the tank. 128. Appreciate your time as always, mate. We'll talk next week. Thanks, mate. Cheers, Marty. Thank you. Simon Dool with us. 98 Test Wickets himself.